The Aspartame Story, The Case of the Killer Sweetener Aspartame was originally conceived and an application submitted as a drug to treat peptic ulcers in December 1965. While working on an ulcer drug, James Schlatter, a chemist at G.D. Searle accidentally discovers aspartame, a substance that is 180 times sweeter than sugar, yet has no calories. In 1981, the FDA approved aspartame as a low-nutritive sweetener. It entered the food chain in a powdered or solid form. Have you heard about this new low-calorie sweetener? Yes, it's great. I'm using it in my tea to replace sugar. My husband doesn't know, but I've added it to his tea too. He could do with losing a bit of weight. In 1983, it was added in liquid form, like in soft, fizzy drink and sodas. Wow, a diet Pepsi. Now I can drink as many as I want with no extra worries about putting on extra weight. Cool. I'll tell my friends. You will find aspartame in Candyroll, Equal, and Nutra Sweet. It is added to many different products, like chewing gum and medicines, diabetic products, weight loss products, and mixed with other sweeteners. Sugar free. Its E number is E951. Then people started getting sick. There is a very good reason why. These headaches are getting worse. Aspartame is made of three basic components. Aspartic acid 40%, phenylalanine 50% and methyl ester 10%. Aspartic acid and phenylalanine are amino acids. Methyl ester breaks down further into methanol. Methanol is basically a wood alcohol. Methanol is the simplest alcohol and is a light, volatile, colorless, flammable liquid with a distinctive odor, very similar to that of ethanol or drinking alcohol. However, unlike ethanol, methanol is highly toxic and unfit for consumption. It is also used for producing biodiesel. Yuck. At room temperature, it is a polar liquid and is used as an antifreeze, solvent, fuel, and as a denaturant for ethanol. Then the methanol further breaks down into formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is used to embalm things like dead bodies. Imagine what this does to living tissue. A diet drink did this. After the formaldehyde, the methanol then breaks down into formic acid, which is another nasty chemical. Formic acid can be found in the venom of fire ants and bees. They use it as a weapon against predators. Formic acid is also used in place of mineral acids for cleaning products such as limescale remover and toilet bowl cleaner. Who'd want to consume these poisons? My name's Dr. Blaylock. I'm a neurosurgeon. The body produces aspartic acid that serves as a neurotransmitter, facilitating the transition of information from neuron to neuron. Excess aspartic acid, an amino acid, creates too many neurotransmitters in certain areas of the brain. This excess damages or kills neurons by overstimulating them, hence the term excitotoxin. Remember, aspartame contains 40% aspartic acid. The late Dr. Olney campaigned for greater regulation of monosodium glutamate, MSG, aspartame, and other excitotoxins for over 20 years. Excessive amounts of aspartame, over time, begin to destroy neurons. Naturally, people mostly vulnerable to excitotoxic neurological damage are Pregnant women, the elderly, children, babies, infants, the chronically afflicted or people who are stressed. For orientation about the gravity of this public health dilemma, I shall mention just a few of the published associations in aspartame reactors. They include the initiation or aggravation of diabetes mellitus, hypoglycemia, convulsions, headache, depression, and other psychiatric states, hyperthyroidism, hypertension, and arthritis, the simulation of multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease and lupus erythematosus, increasing aspartame addiction, an apparent causative role in brain tumors, a neurologic condition in overweight young women known as pseudotumor cerebri, and even the carpal tunnel syndrome, quote by Dr. H. J. Roberts. In vulnerable people, the blood-brain barrier is weaker, therefore these toxins are likely to get past and go straight to the brain, causing illness or even death. As far back as 1988, Seven years after the initial release of aspartame, 80% of complaints volunteered by consumers to the FDA about supplements involved aspartame products. By April 1995, it had received 7,232 complaints including blindness, rashes, tinnitus, headaches, dizziness, confusion, convulsions, grand mal seizures, drowsiness, depression, suicidal tendencies, 
extreme anxiety, palpitations, severe insomnia, personality changes, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, tremors, recent hypertension, severe joint pain, problems with diabetes, impaired hearing, menstrual changes, atypical chest pain, hyperthyroidism, urinary disturbances, aggravated hypoglycemia, addiction to aspartame and weight gain. Also, Dictopiprazine or DKP, a byproduct of aspartame metabolism, DKP has been associated with the formation of brain tumors. DKP has been found to form in aspartame containing beverages during prolonged storage, particularly above 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Gulf War troops drank copious amounts of aspartame sweetened sodas that had been stored for extended periods in the hot Arabian sun. Humans, lacking a couple of key enzymes, are many times more sensitive to the toxic effects of methanol than animals. Therefore, animal studies, with regard to the effects of methanol in the body, are of no value. Aspartame enthusiasts are quick to mention that many common foods such as fruit juices and alcoholic beverages contain methanol. However, in these instances, ethanol is always present, usually in higher amounts. Ethanol serves as an antidote to methanol. Aspartame contains no ethanol. How on earth did aspartame get approval to be added to the world's food chain? That's the question. By 1976, the G.D. Searle Company's campaign to achieve the approval of aspartame was mired in controversy. Amid objections to aspartame approval, formally filed by consumer advocate attorney Jim Turner and neuroscientist John Olney, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA launched an investigation into Searle's laboratory practices. The FDA determined that the aspartame developers' testing procedures were shoddy, producing inaccurate results due to manipulated data. The investigators stated in their 1976 report they had never seen anything as bad as Searle's testing. March 5, 1973, one of the first FDA scientists to review aspartame safety data states that the information provided by Searle is inadequate to permit an evaluation of the potential toxicity of aspartame. The FDA report prompted a grand jury investigation led by U.S. Attorney Sam Skinner. Six months later, Skinner resigned from the U.S. Attorney's Office to take a position at Searle's law firm, Sidley and Austin. Remember Searle, the firm producing aspartame. By March 1977, Searle had hired former Illinois Congressman and former Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, as its chief executive officer. By December 1977, the statute of limitations had run out on the grand jury investigation. Charges against Searle were dropped by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Though opposition to aspartame approval was increasingly being supported by independent scientific studies, Rumsfeld's political muscle prevailed. On July 15, 1981, in one of his first official acts as FDA commissioner under Ronald Reagan, Dr. Arthur Hull Hayes, Jr., approved aspartame for dry products. Aspartame was approved in England through Paul Turner of the Food Standards Agency, without anyone knowing about it. I've studied the case histories of 1,300 aspartame victims over 15 years. I coined the term aspartame disease to encompass reactions to the chemical sweetener, aspartame, commonly known as Nutris Sweet and Equal. Dr. H. J. Roberts, M.D., F.A.C.P., F.C.C.P. As far back as 1988, seven years after the initial release of aspartame, 80% of complaints volunteered by consumers to the FDA about supplements involved aspartame products. By April 1995, it had received 7,232 complaints. To place its magnitude in perspective, over two-thirds of the population now uses thousands of diet sodas and products, including an ever-expanding list of new ones having greater potential for adverse effects. I wrote a book about it. I declared aspartame disease a worldwide epidemic. Hundreds of people's chronic symptoms reversed once aspartame was removed from their diets. Betty Martini from Mission Possible a tireless campaigner against aspartame and other insults against humanity. Aspartame is a toxin, like arsenic and cyanide. I demonstrated that aspartame causes tumors, cancer, seizures, and other chronic health problems. It can make people confused, disorientated, and is linked to autism and Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Blaylock, neurosurgeon, author of numerous books, including Exitotoxins, The Taste That Kills, 
Every known metabolite of aspartame is of marked or questionable toxicity and patently unsafe for human use. The only responsible action would be to immediately take aspartame off the market, fully disclose its toxicities, offer full compensation to the injured public, and criminally prosecute anyone who participated in the placement of aspartame on the market. That includes those who work so diligently to keep it there as well, explained Dr. James Bowen. On November 2, 1987, Emory University Professor of Pediatrics and Genetics, Dr. Louis Elses, testified before Congress. Aspartame is, in fact, a well-known neurotoxin and teratoger, meaning it causes abnormal embryonic development, which in some undefined dose will, irreversibly, in the developing child or fetal brain, produce adverse effect. I am particularly angry at this type of advertising that is promoting the sale of a neurotoxin in the childhood age group. Dr. Elsa's told the nation's lawmakers assembled on Capitol Hill. Dr. Maria Lemony, who did the famous TROCO study that showed that formaldehyde, when converted from the free methyl alcohol in bombs living tissue, said aspartame would murder 200 million people. In 1985, Monsanto purchased G.D. Searle, the chemical company that held the patent to aspartame, the active ingredient in NutraSweet. Monsanto was apparently untroubled by aspartame's clouded past, including a 1980 FDA board of inquiry, comprised of three independent scientists, which confirmed that it might induce brain tumors. Aspartame is still at large in thousands of products around the world, many aimed at children's products, such as soft drinks and liquid medicines, the diabetic market, in slimming products. It has even been twinned with other chemical sweeteners like acesulfame K. Both my husband and myself have been affected by consuming aspartame. In fact, my husband had a psychotic episode brought on by consuming over two liters of diet drink a day containing aspartame in the hope of losing some weight. It puzzled the doctor because he had no mental health problems. We had no idea why we were getting more ill with various horrible symptoms until one day I read about the problems with aspartame. We immediately stopped consuming the diet drinks and recovered very quickly. At the time my husband worked in air traffic control, a very stressful and safety-conscious job. If you eliminate aspartame from your diet it could save your life. Tell others about the dangers of consuming products that contain aspartame. I personally know three people who've recovered from serious symptoms including blindness, hideous tremors, rashes and depression by stopping the consumption of aspartame. One teenager fully recovered from symptoms that her doctor had decided to treat with powerful pharmaceutical drugs. She never touched aspartame again. Many health professionals do not know that aspartame is potentially dangerous and still recommend using aspartame. A review of the film Sweet Misery, A Poisoned World. Narrator Corey Brackett had a strange cause and effect experience with the Diet Cokes she was drinking and quickly found herself disabled and diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Slowly able to walk and speak again, she believes her illness is linked to aspartame. She is co-owner of a video film production company. After 7,000 miles and 25 hours of footage, Sweet Misery will reveal one of the most pervasive, insidious forms of corporate negligence since tobacco. Review written by J.T. Waldron. Because aspartame has been approved for consumption, people automatically think it is safe. Many people are addicted to it. Children's food, diet, drinks, and medications often contain aspartame. Before you go, check your kitchen and bathroom for products containing aspartame. Sometimes it's not even listed as an ingredient on the front of the product. If the product says, contains phenylalanine, then you know it contains aspartame. Some companies have got good at hiding it. Check everything, including sweets, medicines, and even cooking sauces and crisps. It's in thousands of products. Even beloved drinks like Ribena have changed recipe. Sucralose is another chemical to look out for. It's replaced aspartame in many products. Don't forget, E951 is the food additive number for aspartame and look out for contains phenylalanine somewhere on the label. Here's my new blog, artificialsweetenerawareness.blogspot.com. This comic was made with the information on the following websites. The Artificially Sweetened Times, Rents.com, Doorway.com, Betty Martini's website, MPWHI.com which is missionpossibleworldhealthinternational.com and Dr. Mercola's website. It was written in 2015.
using Pixton's comic making software. There are more comics in the series and they can be accessed at artificialsweetenerawareness.blogspot.com.